Oh, you got my um email. When did you send it? Um, I sent it out a few earlier. Earlier around twelve. I gonna have to leave this. Had to wait the Zoom meeting at two twenty five for for a doctor's appointment. Okay, that's fine. Not a problem at all. All right. Thanks for letting me know. So good afternoon, everyone. Hope all is well. Hope everyone is doing all right. Everybody's doing okay. Um, due date, not due date. Ha. Uh, I, um, I can't even get it out now. Face to face, coming back. You know, they got uh, pushed to February 1st. I see some people shaking their head, yes. Um, so uh, we also, you know, I'll give you guys a few lectures. I may send an email out. Um, you know, gauge in the class, see um, how we feel about this face-to-face -face encounter as well, because we do have the flexibility of not doing face-to-face -face if everybody agrees. Um, but I'm going to send out, I told you anyway, that I was going to send out all the lectures from a previous class so that um, if you don't want to come to class face-to-face, -face, then you don't have to, even if we do go back face-to-face. -face. So just throwing it out there to anybody who did not, or who were not here on the first day, if anybody have any questions, you know, about first day happenings, then uh, feel free to stay back after class. We can talk about it, make sure you're good and clear. But right now we're gonna go ahead and get into our first set of notes, our lecture. Uh, any quick questions before we get started? Everybody good? Good, 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 okay. All right, so. All right, so we have angles and radian measure. Um, over here, this black box, um, I wrote it afterwards, but uh, I angle just two rays with the same endpoint, and that endpoint is your vertex. So my angle is two rays with the same endpoint. And most of you have already seen that before, but I just wanna make sure everybody's okay with that. So your angle is two rays with the same endpoint, and that endpoint is your vertex. All right. So for your angle to be in standard position, and as always, if, um, you know, this is our first day of notes, if I move too fast or if I scroll up too fast, always feel free to either type in chat, I will be looking at the chat, or uh, you can unmute and just say, uh, can you scroll back up real quick or something like that, or if you need me to repeat anything, uh, just let me know, just like you would be in a regular class. Um, but Standard position is an angle. Uh, when your angle is in standard position, is when the vertex is at the uh, at the origin of your rectangular coordinate system, and the initial side lies along the positive x-axis. So I'll show you how that looks in a second. So here, our angle in um, two different angles, both of them are in uh, standard position. Notice that your origin, uh, yeah. origin is right here in both cases. And that's where the vertex lies. Your initial side, positive x-axis. And then if it goes Counterclockwise, that's considered a positive angle. And then if you goes clockwise, then that's considered a negative angle.
And uh, when it comes to my handwriting, I'm a little better with it now. I was just, when I started writing on this for this class, I just started using the screen. So I was just getting used to writing with this. So uh, if anything needs to be rewritten, not necessarily rewritten, but I'll re restate it. Of course I will rewrite it, but if anything needs to be restated, feel free to ask what was that word or whatever. I'm not offended by anything. I'm all right. All right. Um, and these two statements, what I just mentioned, positive angles are generated by counterclockwise, counterclockwise rotation. Negative angles are generated by clockwise rotation. All right, scrolling up. So now we're getting to the types of angles. Your acute angle is between zero degrees and 90 degrees. Why is 90 exactly? Because 90 degrees is considered a right angle. Yeah, I said why, and why is 90 exactly? Not sure what you're asking. You said why? I'm saying right angles are 90 exactly. Oh, you're saying right. Okay, I thought you said why. Okay, yep, you're absolutely correct. Mm -hmm. Absolutely correct, sir. So getting to that, like you just mentioned, your right angle is 90 degrees exactly. Notice I put in there that that square, that box um, is needed in order for you to know that you have a right angle. You can never assume that you have a right angle or 90 degrees. Um, it has to either be said in the directions or you have to see that square there. Um, once again, uh, you can never assume it. 91 degrees, 89 degrees to the neck eye will probably look the same as 90 degrees. So there has to be some symbol or indication that you have a right angle. All right, somebody say something. Oh, can I read the negative angles sentence? Negative angles are generated by clockwise rotation. All right, are we good? Scrolling up. All right, obtuse angle is between 90 degrees and 180 degrees. All right, last one, no, no, we got one other one. Where we have our straight angle, which is just a straight line, 180 degrees, and then a full rotation or one revolution is 360 degrees. All right, scrolling up, everybody good? Everybody good with every rotation? All right. So here, radian measure, just the wording behind it. You know, we're going to get into that and just, you know, put it to numbers and everything and practice it with numbers. But just the wording behind it, consider an arc length S on circle of radius R, the measure of the central angle theta that intercepts arc, uh, the arc 
is um, that's Greek letter theta right here equal to s over r radians. So here's a little bit of a diagram that tries to explain what you know um, was worded there. All right, scrolling up. So here we have a, a word problem. Um, the central, central angle theta in a circle of radius six inches intercepts an arc of length 15 inches. What is the radian measure of theta? So I'll walk through it in a second, but give me a chance to write that down. All right, so central angle of theta in a circle of radius six, so they give us the radius to be six, that's our R. Intercepts an arc length, um, intercepts an arc of length 15 inches, so that means S is 15. So it goes back to here when we were describing uh, what each piece means. S is the arc length and R is your radius. Let me write that 15 a little better. And it says, what is the radian measure of theta? So we do S over R. And so there's 15 over six, which, is, which would just be 2.5 radians. Now notice here, um, they were both in inches. So you do want to make sure you do have the same measurements. Um, you know, one was in feet and the other was in inches. Not saying you would get one like that, but just saying that if you were to see one like that, if one was in feet and one was in inches, then you need to convert either both to inches or both to feet, you know, they have to be in the same measure. All right. Questions before we go to the next thing. Write that better. All right, so the next thing, the relationship between degrees and radians. So 360 degrees equal to two pi radians, 180 degrees is just pi radians. And what was wrong with me right in between? All right, so the next exercise is converting between degrees and radians.
So we're going to convert from degrees to radians. You multiply by pi over 180 degrees. Radians to degrees, you multiply by 180 over pi. All right. All right, so if we want to convert each to radians, let me see, is there anything I want to erase? I can just walk through it versus me erasing. Okay, so we have 30 degrees. That's what we had initially. So I want to go from um, degrees to radians. So notice, even if you forget, you know, you know it's going to have to be pi over 180, right? So the 180 is always attached to degrees. So if you're starting off with degrees, that means you need degrees down here in the bottom so that they can cancel out, that measurement can cancel out. Just like when we had inches over inches, that canceled out with force. We need the degrees to cancel out. So that means I need 180 degrees in the bottom in my denominator. And so that's what we did right here. So the degrees cancel and that leaves us in radians. And then from there you reduce 30 over 180. The 30s cancel and leave you with just six in your denominator. So it'd be pi over six. And it should be, normally we don't write it, but it should be pi over six radians. Same thing here with the 90 degrees. 90 degrees, you multiply that by power at 180. Once again, those degrees cancel for us. So then we have 90 pi over 180. And that reduces the power to radians. Any questions? Any questions so far? No. All right. All right. Last one like this before we go the other way. We have negative 135 degrees. Same process. We're trying to convert degrees to radians. So we multiply by power over 180. And that'll give us negative 135 over 180. And 135 is three times 45, 180 is four times 45. So those 45s cancel, leaving us with negative three pi over four radians. All right, problems, any problems? All right, going the other way, we want to convert to degrees. So we have pi over three radians. And so instead of multiplying by pi over 180, we're multiplying by 180 over pi. 
So in this case, not only does the rate, uh, does the radiance cancel, but also the uh, pi cancel as well. Leave me with 180, 180 degrees over three, and that would be 60 degrees. All right. So we have negative five pi over three radians. Multiplying that by 180 degrees. The pi and radians cancel, leaving me with negative five times 180 over three. All right, so if you wanted to multiply five times 180 and then divide by three, that's fine. What I did since I was on the board, three divides into 180, leave me with 60, then five times 60 gives me that 300. So that's 300 degrees. Either way, you should come up with 300 degrees. All right, then the last one like this. This time we have 2.3 radians. So the radian measure cancels. We multiply it by 180 over pi, but there is no pi to cancel in that. So that will be 2.3 times 180 over pi. And then MathLab will let you know how many decimal places they will want you to round that out if that's what it, what it ends up being. More than likely, that's, that would that is what it would occur. Uh, you know, pi divided into anything would just be a um, long decimal value. So, um, if it asks for the tenths, make sure you give tenths. If it asks for hundreds, make sure you give hundreds. If you give the wrong decimal place, they will mark it wrong. Uh, stuff like that, I'll always make sure you look at, especially when it comes to your test homework. Since it's unlimited, I expect you to go ahead and just you know. You do a problem, especially if it's a calculator one. But when it comes to your test, though, um, wherein all you get is two shots, always make sure you look over your test because uh, if there's a discrepancy, if there was like maybe you put a negative and it should have been a negative or something like that, if there's any partial credit that I can give, then um, I, I wouldn't know to go look at your your test unless you told me to or asked me to. Um, so your test, if you ever, you know, hey, I'm, I put in, oh, for an example, if you were to put in x equal to five and all they wanted was five, they would mark x equal to five wrong. Um, so if you want points for that, I wouldn't know to go in there and put them in manually or to change your, your score unless you were to let me know of that. So whenever you do your test, always make sure you uh, go back and look over your answers, make sure everything was marked properly, and then uh, you know we'll be good to go. So any problems with this before we go to the next one? Not finished with 5-1 just yet. Everybody good? All right, it's 5-2 right there. All right, so this is still 5-1. I just, maybe that next class I probably ran out of time just for whatever reason. So here, coterminal angles, two angles with the same initial and terminal sides but possibly different rotations. So you see my two examples down here. Um, the first one is 30 degrees and the Q angle. Uh, both of them are Q angles, as a matter of fact, when you talk about their, um, well, I wanna get ahead of myself. I won't even go there, not yet. So anyway, their initial side uh, here, you just go out 30 degrees, but if I make a whole nother rotation after that, That'd be 390 degrees, um, but it, they will be considered coterminal angles. They have the same initial side, uh, same terminal side, but the rotation is different. So this one only rotates to 360, uh, 30 degrees, excuse me. This one goes to 390 degrees.
All right. Scroll him up. So find the coterminal angles. You would do so by adding or subtracting multiples of 360 degrees. Uh, I'll just erase that and write that that well anyway. All right. So let's look at the directions for the exercise under this. Find a positive angle less than 360 degrees that is coterminal. All right, want to find a positive angle less than 300 degrees, 360 degrees, excuse me, that is coterminal. So the first one, 420 degrees, we would just subtract 360 from it, and that'll give us 60. Next one, we have negative 120 degrees. So we will add 360 to it. That'll give us 240. So remember that the, what we wanted was a positive angle less than 360 degrees. So that 420 was positive, but it was greater than 360. So we should try 360 from it. That negative 120, we need to add 360 to give us an angle that's less than 360 degrees. All right, any problems with that before we go to radians? So same directions, it's just that um, instead of doing 360, we'll do uh, two pi. I thought I wrote somewhere, hold on one second guys. Maybe I didn't write it yet. I thought I did write it somewhere, but uh, just in case I didn't write it anywhere, 360 degrees is the same thing as two pi. So that's why we're using two pi here. And because we're dealing with degrees, we use 360 up here. All right, so for the next one, we have 17 pi over six. So we're gonna subtract two pi from it. So that here we will have to use our fractions. Um, they don't want decimal values, so they will want you to stay exact. So that means you will have to do your fraction work. If you're gonna subtract two pi from 17 pi over six, that need, means you need to convert two pi to a fraction that has a common denominator of six. So we would do that by multiplying top and bottom by six. And that gives me 12 pi over six. Now we can subtract 17 pi over six and 12 pi over six, and that'll give us five pi over six. All right. Next one, same type of deal. So this time is negative. So we have negative power over 12. 
So we're gonna add two pi to it. That'll give you 12. We're gonna, um, well, we're gonna have to multiply top and bottom by, of that two pi over one by 12. Because of our denominator 12 here. So that'd be 12 over 12, give you 25 pi over 12. Add them together, they'll give you 23 pi over 12. Everybody good, everybody straight. All right, that's not notes. Let me see, what is this? I think somebody asked a question here. So you don't have to worry about that. Here's where we're getting started. So the length of a circular arc. So you're gonna let R be the radius of circle. Let me write some of this a little better. R be the radius of a circle and theta the non-negative. Radiant measure. of a central angle of a circle. The length of the arc intercepted by the central angle is S equal to R times theta. And also I, I underlined uh, radian measure. So that means if your angle, if theta is in degrees, you do have to convert it to radians before you can use this formula. All right, so let's do an example. A circle has a radius of 10 inches. Find the length of the arc intercepted by a central angle of 120 degrees. All right, so we'll use a formula we just finished um, alluding to. It says that the radius is 10 inches and wants to find the arc length or the length of the arc intercepted by the central angle of 120 degrees. So like I mentioned before, if your central angle is in degrees, you do need to convert it to radians before you can uh, plug it into the formula. So that's what we did here. So we'll just multiply it by pi over 180, canceling out the 60. That reduces down to 2 pi over 3. And then we can go ahead and plug into the formula. 10 is our radius. And then theta is 2 pi over 3. Multiply those together. If I wanted the exact answer,
very like this. If they ask for the exact answer, then it would be 20 pi over three. Here, yeah, this would be an approximation. Any problems, any problems? No. All right, all right. Let's scroll up. All right. So here we want to convert 54.39 degrees to degrees, minutes, and seconds. All right. I think somebody must have asked this question. Four E one four. All right. So it must have been one of uh, some a uh, question that uh, was in the back of math lab. Okay. So we want to convert fifty four point thirty nine degrees to degrees, minutes, and then seconds. So what you're going to do is just keep multiplying the decimal point uh, by sixty degrees. So fifty four degrees um, just goes right here. Let me see what we can color. You know, like I said, it's 54 degrees. And then this first slash is your minutes. Just trying to use a little different color coding. And so where you get that from is that you take the point, point 39 and multiply it by 60. And so that gives you that 23. And then in order to get your seconds, you take the uh, point 0.4. See what color? Um, that was fine. So you take this point 0.4 and multiply that times 60 degrees. And that'll be that 24. All right, so you're just multiplying the decimal value by 60 degrees. So once again, we have 54, that goes in the first box, that's your degrees. Take the point 39, multiply that times 60. So that 23 right here, We'll go in for seconds and you take this 0.4 and multiply that times 60 and that'll give you the 24 that will go in here. All right. And we could have left it the same thing. All right, questions on that, questions on that. It's 2.14, let's see what time this class lets out. Is it three? Let's see how much we have over here. Let's do a little in 5.2 and then uh, I'll let you guys go. Okay, 5.2 right triangle trigonometry. So we have six trig functions. First three are sine, cosine, and tangent. Then the inverses of those would be uh, cosecant, secant, and then cotangent.
Okay. <laughs> Sorry, y'all. <laughs> Uh, hopefully we can make it a little better. <laughs> All right, so uh, one way you can um, try to remember the relationship between uh, your trig functions and your right triangle sides is SOHCAHTOA. So SO, which is S-O-H, represents sine opposite and hypotenuse, ka, C-A-H is cosine adjacent and hypotenuse, and then toa is tangent opposite and adjacent. And so we're referencing the right triangle here where you'll have your angle, your theta. And so when we're talking about opposite, we're talking about opposite of theta or adjacent to theta. And then your hypotenuse is always fixed. Your hypotenuse is always opposite that right angle. As a matter of fact, let me scroll up. I think I'm saying some stuff down here. Yep. Everybody done with Sokotoa? Okay. So here we go. Hypotenuse is always opposite the right angle. Your hypotenuse is always the longest side. And then your side relationships correspond to their respective angles. So just a few things that we're going to use to help. Solve. So we say side relationships correspond to their respective angles. Um, if it's the longest side, then it will have the, have, have the um, largest angle. The smallest side will have the smallest angle, you know, stuff like that. Their relationships, you know, directly correspond to the opposite angles. So just an example in reference to what we're saying here, if side A is longer than side B, normally your sides are lowercase angles and your angles are capital. I said lowercase angles. Your sides are lowercase letters and your angles are normally capital letters. So if side A is longer than side B, then angle B will be larger than angle, angle A will be larger than angle B if I get it out. I think I wrote it better than I said it. So if side A is longer than side B, then angle A will be larger than angle B. So that's what we're talking about, the relationships. All right, so Sokotoa is uh, this over here. And, but I remember, remember I said that cosecant is the inverse of sine, secant is the inverse of cosine, cotangent, inverse of tangent. So if you flip those fractions, that will give you a cosecant, secant, and cotangent. So sine is opposite over hypotenuse, cosine adjacent over hypotenuse, toa, tangent, opposite over adjacent, then for cosecant, secant, and cotangent, you just flip those. Notice we have hypotenuse over opposite, hypotenuse over adjacent, adjacent over opposite.
All right. Pythagorean theorem. So a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared, or um, a and b are interchangeable. So oftentimes they're just called legs. So you could say leg squared plus leg squared is equal to hypotenuse squared. The one that's not interchangeable, of course, is your hypotenuse. That's always on one side by itself. So C is always your hypotenuse. A and B are always legs and are interchangeable. C is always by itself on one side of the equation. Um, going back, you know, leaning on what we said already, you know, C is going to be the longest as well, um, since it is your hypotenuse. It's always opposite of your 90 degree angle. But like I said, that, that translates to what we said, correlates to what we've already said about it. Everybody okay? Can we go to example? All right, let me erase this. Okay. All right, so it says find the value of each of the six trig functions of theta. So in this problem, they give us this diagram. Um, without the blue, and they don't give us C, they give us A and B, side A and B. What was the formula? You're talking A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Don't know if that's what you're talking about. Want to make sure. C. Okay. All right. Just making sure that was the formula you're referring to. Let me know we can go down. Don't want to move too fast if people are still copying. Are we good with that first part? Going back right there, everybody straight. Okay. So this is our diagram right here that we're going to use to find our trig, fun trig functions, the six of them. Um, notice whenever you're dealing with problem or diagram, I always suggest that you write down your given information first. And our given information was that A was five and B was 12. We did not know C. And so we do need to find out what C is before we can find our other, uh, would find any of our uh, trig functions. We wanna make sure we have all of our information before we start plugging in values. All right. So first thing we do is use the Pythagorean theorem. A squared plus B squared is equal to C squared. So we do five squared plus 12 squared equal to C squared. Five squared, 25, 12 squared, 144. Add those together, we get 169. Then we wanna solve for C, take the square root of both sides. That will give us 13. Now, uh, for those of you who may remember, Whenever you take the square root of both sides, you're supposed to use a square root uh, theorem, square root property, wherein um, plus or minus is involved. But don't forget we're dealing with measurements here and geographical figures, so there's no such thing as a negative measurement. So there's not a negative inches or anything like that. So we do not have to consider the negative when we do here in the square root property. Let's see. Okay, not a problem. You have a good one, and um, I'll be sending that video out shortly so you can review the rest of the lecture. Okay. Everybody okay with C being 13? Thought you all right. See you on, see you next week. See all right, week. sounds good. You have a good one. Have a great weekend. All right, but for now, I'm on by see you on Tuesday. All right. Bye. All right, take care. All right, so now we have A, B, and C, and now we can just plug in our values according to the positioning of our theta. 
So our theta is going to dictate what's opposite and what's adjacent. Remember, your hypotenuse is fixed. That's always opposite your 90 degree angle. Then when you say opposite of theta, that's going to be 5. And adjacent to theta is going to be 12. So that dictates your opposite and adjacent. All right, so once you've established what's your opposite and adjacent, once again, hypotenuse is fixed, we can go ahead and plug in. So, so Katoa sine is opposite over hypotenuse, so that's 5 over 13. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, 12 over 13. Tangent is opposite over adjacent, which is 5 over 12. And then from there, we flip those. See if I can write a better line than that. No idea that. But all uh, we flip those, and uh, cosecant is 13 over 5, secant is 13 over 12, and then cotangent 12 over 5. write this stuff a little better. All right, so questions on what we did here. Make sure we're okay. No, sir. No, thank you, thank you. So that's it. Five, two, no, five, two. All right, so this is a good place to stop. Um, that's not the end of five, two. You have some more things. Uh, along the same lines, but you know, things, values that aren't as clean as 13, you know, how, dealing with the radicals and everything. So we'll get into that next class, but I think this is a good place for you guys to, um, you know, go ahead and get into math lab with, we've done all of five, one, and then five, two. Um, uh, we'll finish off on next class. So before we close out, questions or anything, questions or anything. Everybody good, everybody straight. All right, so your goal now is to go ahead and get into Math Lab. Go ahead and get started. See if you have any questions. Some questions may not show up until you actually start doing this work. So um, other than that, you guys have a great weekend. Be safe. Um, have a great holiday weekend because you know Monday is a holiday. And um, I'll see you on Tuesday. You guys take care. Have a good day. Thank you very much. Thank you, Hussein. Take care.